Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, good. Um, so welcome everyone to our focus discussion um, with Professor Alan Mayo and Professor Mario Minichello. Uh, I'm Dr. Ari Chan from the University of Newcastle uh, and Dr. Andrew Howes from the University of Newcastle, uh, bringing you a significant project as a part of the Design Principles and Practices Conference, um, which is running over the next few days. Uh, it's, this exhibition is produced as a part of a research grant funded by the College of Human and Social Futures at the University of Newcastle, but involves a, a wide breadth of international collaborators, illustration, research academics uh, from around the world uh, who have submitted to the exhibition, but also who are partaking in a global discussion around illustration, the future of the academy, how non-traditional research outputs uh, are recognised by the academy and the institution, uh, but also how we've started to negotiate what is now a very established discipline uh, uh, globally, uh, starting to uh, interconnect all of those different discussions that may have, ha have, have been independently um, ha happening around the world. Uh, so uh, it's, the exhibition is called Seeking Vision, uh, and uh, it also has a gallery catalogue with research statements from all of uh, the following global contributors all illustration academics, lecturers, professors uh, who have contributed uh, to, to this conversation about um, you know, their work um, and what it means. Uh, part of this is to bring together a group of senior academics that look at practice-based research, practice-led research, uh, research into and on illustration and speculative or blue sky research. So starting to think about the real range of different research that's occurring globally uh, and the works in the gallery and the research statements that have been provided by the academics are there uh, in order to help give a great understanding of all of the different approaches that people have been taking uh, and looking at, including uh, many PhD candidates that have contributed uh, cutting, edge re re cutting edge research at the moment. Um, and we also have a bit of a program of research activities that are building on conversations from 2021. Um, that, that uh, have been facilitated by a number of the people in this presentation. Um, we're proposing a research project that looks at the role of virtual galleries today, developed by Luke O'Donnell, um, as a space for peer-reviewed illustration as well, and starting to think about the virtual space as we're all aware of COVID-19 and the, the effects that, and that it's had on uh, how we have these conversations into the future in alignment with this particular conference. Uh, and also a real world testing of the University of Newcastle's uh, non-traditional research output policy uh, and a, a part of our participation of um, in, and in and around and with the conference uh, in a help to strengthen the case study of NTRO policies and help provide a framework from, uh, again, very established senior academics all the way down to PhD candidates who are trying to negotiate this space. Um, We've entitled the exhibition Seeking Vision, um, in which we uh, are bringing together this international partnership, um, looking at the landscape of visual communication and illustration research in the broader society, community, industry and universities, uh, as well as looking at its role within the creative industries uh, as a burgeoning and established field as well. Um, and it looks at the virtual exhibition in response to COVID-19, that globalizing uh, community. This is a little bit of a, a schematic of the overview of the gallery um, and the gallery layout that people will work through and have a look at, uh, at colleagues' work uh, and an overview of its production and design by our technical team. Um, and this is a little bit of a video walkthrough of what that looks like, uh, how people can engage with a high fidelity gallery and exhibition uh, and look at the range of different projects that are both working globally, uh, but also involve um, traditional and hybrid digital practices uh, that, that look at the role of illustration in response to uh, a variety of different content, whether it be reportage illustration uh, or traditional scientific and natural history illustration, uh, some clips of its production and the way that it looks um, from the outside of engagement and thinking about that high fidelity environment the lighting and how that affects and responds to the digital space uh, so that people all around the world uh, in a global pandemic can also engage with that work um, 
you know, we have two rooms in the gallery to the left and right that are organized uh, in relation to how, how colleagues have uh, essentially organized whether they're in a practice base or practice led approach. Uh, and there's a range of um, the way that uh, people are presenting their work through research statements in the catalog. Uh, so these are a couple of stills of the exhibition uh, in the space. Looks and also noting uh, within this virtual space the capacity to engage with empirical data, uh, collecting information um, around how people engage with the interactivity of the gallery and how it works, which is uh, really foregrounding the future of how we might think about engagement with traditional and digital works into. Um, future thinking of how the university thinks about illustration research in particular uh, and how uh, we can collect data and start to think about using unity in digital spaces. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge the, the technical team um, and developer of the gallery, Luke O'Donnell, uh, virtual gallery installer Alex Barnes Keegan and virtual gallery installer Jenna Gillard, along with technical team Dominic Lindis, who have all contributed to bringing together uh, really pragmatic form of research uh, into the future and how it may operate and work. Uh, so we're going to open up with a little bit of a discussion with uh, Professor Alan Lau and Professor Mario Minichello, uh, both uh, attached to the university in honorary conjoint uh, roles. Uh, we've helped guide some of the discussion and development over the last couple of months. Um, so we'll open up to that discussion. Thank you for joining us in the report, uh, recording space. <laughs> right, well, I think I'll start this off just by saying that um, as far as I'm concerned, I think uh, what, what we've done here and what we've established is, is long overdue. Um, I mean, if you uh, just think about, you know, the recent history of, of illustration practice mm -hmm. internationally, and um, how connected it, it's all become and how important a lot of the context of practice that we work within is, has such a, um, an impact on society at large, uh, on its audiences. I mean, it has done for, 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 many, for many, many years, but, it, but it's becoming more and more relevant now. And a lot of people in the know about me will, will be aware that I've written quite extensively about something I call the polymath principle, which is where I see the work of illustrators becoming much more sort of um, intellectually sort of engaged with the subject matter, with um, researching what that subject is all about and, and, and understanding what it means to communicate to a particular audience. Because in the past, if you, if you went back, you know, in ancient times to the 1950s and 1960s, a lot of illustrators were just being employed as sort of um, technicians, if you like, being directed very much by art directors in, in studios and in agencies. That's changed considerably. And an industry is now looking at a different type of animal. There are actually a lot, a lot of agencies are now recruiting what they call creatives, which can be an illustrator who can do photography, who can do graphics, who can write, who can research. And it's having all those sort of skills combined it is becoming very, very important indeed. And, and also the other thing that, that I have to say, and I'm getting back to this business of, of, the, um, of the international context that we're, that we're, that we're talking about. Every time you produce a piece of work, and I've mentioned this before, um, it's likely to go, even if it's just a localized piece of work or a piece of work which you're producing in a blue sky or speculative sort of way, um, you're more than likely gonna put it on a blog, on a website. It's got, it can be seen anywhere and it can influence people anywhere. And, and, and I think that the research that we do is very important in, in terms of it having an influence, not just out there on our audiences, but amongst ourselves, because that hasn't happened 
very much in the, in the past. And looking at that exhibition, which is this is I have to say that just now was the first time I've I've looked at it properly and seen what the content is like. The breadth of visual language, the yeah. um, the whole aspect of what that looks like for me is 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 looking tremendous. It is in, not see it always worried me that um, people that sort of may call themselves academics and researchers but work it, with, through illustration don't necessarily produce work when it comes to the artwork of a, of a particularly high level but and i've seen that before i think that that this this exhibition that we have now has has, has thrown that out the window because looking at what i can see it looks absolutely superb and i'm not just yeah, saying yeah. that because i'm part of it and because i'm looking at you and i know that you work with it and you you know that we're all in it together but I, I i really think it think it does i think it's incredibly exciting and if you look at the roster of contributors you know you yeah we've got people from the uk from the united states which is very very important and from Australia, you know, there's a very broad range of, of, of people from around the world that's contributing to this. And, uh, and I think the potential for this group to grow and to have it have influence is, is, is fantastic. And, uh, you know, so, so, so I have to start off by, by actually saying that. We need to be positive about this. It's a fantastic discipline to work within. It's growing, it's expanding, it's becoming more and more influential through all sorts of different contexts. Because let's face it, you can see illustration anywhere in children's books, in you see it informing people and educating and presenting new knowledge. It, 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 it provides us with lots of entertainment in every way that you can think. It, and, and, and importantly, it commentates. It gives us opinion. It's journalistic. It's it has it has a very strong reportage sort of quality to it, and um, and and also it, it it promotes it advertises it markets it 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 can do absolutely anything, and it's seen everywhere. Even when we walk down the street, a lot of people don't understand how influential illustration is. Just a poster on the wall, it's Bob. It is a visual image and it's contextualized. And, and I think that we need to, you know, and, and as a group, I think we're going to expand that. And, and, I, and I can yeah. see it, and I can see everybody yeah, coming absolutely. to realize and understand what it is that the illustration is, is all yeah. about. And I think that that exhibition is certainly starting to do that. Mm. Yeah, brilliant, I agree. I've always absolutely, said, Alex, um, can I? Sorry, um, Mario, I always thought about that particular point as that, invisible visible art that's just immersive socially everywhere that we're all engaged in yeah all the time so yeah that's true that's good sorry mario you were going to say something there no i look i i, I absolutely uh you know i want to make that as hot as as such an important thing that we have brought this group together i think the Academies around the world, and we were discussing this before we even started, are, are at a point of crisis. Is that there is an existential crisis uh, at large in the world to do with COVID at the moment, but also to do with what place do humans have in the world? Machines can do so much of what we do so much better, and they can do it faster, and they can do it for billionaires for nothing. They're the ultimate slaves, really. Capitalism is literally eating us and eating itself. And academies are really struggling to be something more than just another insurance group or um, broker of some description where it's monetizing everything. And the things that it will monetize most are the things that it can get money from the research councils that are all artificially grown anyway. So STEM leads the way for not such a good reason because STEM in itself won't solve any of the problems of the world. So there is this crisis and the crisis is, I think, interestingly punctuated by things that they leave out of the equation. And this is a really important thing, I think, to say. Human beings are the only species on Earth that can imagine something. They have imagination. They can imagine something that doesn't exist and then make it exist. And illustration is that first step often whether it's industrial illustration or books or all the stuff that alan has said it is actually something that didn't exist before it is actually fundamentally not just a creative process but it's actually a, a, a process of origination 
And so it's interesting because this is timely in terms of being able to re-explain what the human qualities are in the arts. And illustration is a good one because it communicates well. The other thing I think I just want to quickly say is somewhere along the line after art schools were incorporated into universities, universities lost their way a little bit. They stopped trying to understand what it was to have these strange people in who imagined stuff, who did dance, who did drawing, who did all these things which somehow seemed oddly superficial with some of these big things of splitting atoms and finding proteins. But the problem is every discovery needs to be humanized, it needs to be socialized, and you need a human, you need a social license to operate those ideas. And by not understanding the language and the tenor of what we do, it's actually isolating itself from being able to make those solutions work in the real world. And that loss of confidence is part to do with people and this is where I think it's important what Alan has said and, and the, the work that Ari and Andrew have done uh, and the team is the academy really has to recognize what illustration is and by putting in categories such as research that is led by practice research that is reflective of practice because it's based in practice and, and research that's speculative and this is interesting as well because Part of the problems of universities and why universities may become uh, increasingly dysfunctional and irrelevant and irrelevant to the next generation is that we are over theorizing everything. We, we can hire so many theoreticians and methodologists, but not have one single person can, that can make a thing, that can create a thing. And I think this is a, a really important part of the existential crisis that by actually saying, look, you can recognize that in speculative illustration, we're actually trying to imagine the future. And if we do that by imagining the future, even if it's faux futures, if it's a better future for humanity, it's a bit like psychologists who say, you know, smile even when you're unhappy because fake it till you make it. At least we're actually shifting that paradigm of thought. So I think even in our theorizing, which is the speculative side, there is something practical about that. There's something that is actually about finding the future mark for us. So I think with all that, this is important. And we're only, Alan, Andrew, and, and actually everyone, Ari and everyone in this space, because it, this is a very large group of people from across the world. I'm really impressed at how people, you know, have really wanted to cooperate with each other. And some of the egos have definitely been put on the back burner. I mean, I can only say that I, my own ego is huge. So, you know, I'm putting mine on the back burner. It's a big back burner. Uh, it's not a Bunsen burner. It is a big fire. Um, but this is important because if humans can't cooperate, then I think that what we might do to speculate the future, um, lead the future and kind of rethink and resurface some of the past to inform the future, in this way that is immediate and in visual and is an executive summary of thought, which is what images are, gets lost. So let's actually see what, where we go after this, but I think this is an excellent start and I really look forward to the paper and I'm looking forward to the, the discussion after this. Thank you. Yeah, I agree entirely. Yeah, with, it, with, uh, with, it, with everything that you've said. Yeah, and I think for <laughs> us, it's, um, you know, for being around the illustration research space for a while, it's nice to be able to have this proactive approach where um, you don't have to explain what you do. You've got this collective there and you can, uh, it's accessible to our own institutions and, and more broadly, what illustration research looks like. And to be able to walk around a room and see the breadth of what's there and at the click of a button, be able to access the academics, the, the background and the context for the research and then to click even further and contact the researcher, you're actually just, we're making this really, really accessible um, uh, portal for the illustration that we do. And unlike other exhibitions where it's pulled down in two weeks, there it is as an archive, we can add to it, we can yeah, yeah. contextualize it, we can um, be inspired by what other illustration researchers are doing in the same space, because it's there and accessible. We can point our PhD candidates to it. We can point our PVCs to it. We can point anyone to it for the first time, be able to sort of, I guess, give it that sort of um, visual life and, and a way to interact with it. And I think the other benefit for us, I guess, in that sort of institutional sense is that um, 
we have to sort of, I guess, contextualize what is the impact, what is the engagement, what is the, the reach of the work that we do. Um, and from working in these virtual galleries for the last couple of years for, with our students, looking at that ex end of year graduate show where we've had to go online and show the work, we've been able to see that we put an exhibition like this up and um, last year's exhibition for here at the University of Newcastle was 149 countries touch pointed with that website. Um, and wow. I think it was two and a half thousand individual sort of IP addresses sort of came to those sort of galleries. So you can start to report back and show, um, I, I guess, the reach of these things. And, and with the development team here, looking at that capacity within galleries to be able to see how long an, an individual works, work is looked at or how many times a work is sort of where people are in the physical space and how they engage with our work. There's so many layers to this um in that pragmatic sense of understanding what the gallery does uh, on top and of just having that opportunity for us to showcase what we do and it, let it explain for itself what illustration yeah. research is and i think to just pick up on two points there one the ability of internationalizing this and thinking about uh, how we can engage with a global network but also that not all things exist in the gallery as alan mentioned the illustration is in a context and it's in a context that people engage with and a gallery is just one way of engaging illustration as it's so immersive uh, in the world it's all around us and the way that we uh, exist with it and start to think about our engagement with it. but also picking up on mario's point about how information is socialized and that illustration and very much reliant on drawing is the way of translating the immaterial to the material in that very immediate sense, but also in the refined sense of communicating in, in, uh, images, communicating context and communicating concepts behind those, whether it be uh, in a service uh, approach to research or whether it be about communicating the practice itself and the process itself, as you've both indicated which is um, so important about the discussion that perhaps STEM needs to uh, th really realise that the power of that imagination, the power that illustration uh, and non-traditional researchers more broadly, broadly uh, are contributing to how society evolves and it communicates itself to itself uh, and all of us who are engaging with it. So, yeah. Yep, fantastic. My final bit for me at least is that I think the world is moving on and there is no doubt everything that you've you guys have said and particularly your Alan's piece around you know illustration is everywhere it's being used everywhere it's being used in really interesting ways the fact that you know this is a, a kind of visualizing way of of you know connecting people to some quite interesting spaces and ideas and and yeah, moving on all sorts of debates and, uh, and visions. And, and this gives us an opportunity to just explore where the limits of that are and try to redefine this word, this term non-traditional research. When I first came to this academy for the first time ever, I was asked if, if I had um, a H index which you get, you get hugely through publishing uh, in referee journals, and that's fine. But I've had over, and I'm, I know Alan will probably have as many, uh, over 150 to 200 uh, exhibitions around the world where the dissemination of knowledge and the interaction with the communities are huge. I think research is research. It's whether you can actually find ways of capturing what that research is in these categories and that people see value in it. And I'll tell you now, industry sees value in it in the same way that at some point, beauty as a term became something that couldn't be used in all kinds of intellectual ways. And yet the trade routes around the world were fun founded on things that were beautiful that could yeah. be exchanged for money. So the world is going to drive this anyway. And if the academies want to be more and more irrelevant, then uh, let them carry on. With, and I, look, I've part of my talk uh, with John Aitken um, is around collaboration with STEM. And the people in STEM have no problems. It's actually about government policy. And I'm not yeah. really clear how that's formed around the world. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, just, um, just to sort of finish off what I think about, about this group. Um, 
And thinking of the future and, and where this is going to go and, and, and the, the relevance of it, um, I, I, see, I see this as becoming a tremendous resource and, and, and yeah. an archive mm -hmm. as well. For all sort, for all sorts of things, for all sorts of work, and and the fact that it's this is an online thing, I I, I, I you you know I, mean, I think Andrew you mentioned just now about the fact that you could direct potential PhD students and and so on to this, that that is such an important thing to say and 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 the thing to think and 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 also it's not just like PhD students but I think undergrad students could really benefit an awful lot from this. Uh, you know, I, I, I can imagine that as well. So, yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Right. Um, well, thanks for joining us, Alan and Mario and uh, Andrew. Um, it's been really great to see, I guess, a discussion or formed around the, the practical or practical research that we've been Brilliant. seeing here. And, um, you know, being able to see how it already is a bit of a stimulus for conversation around um, illustration and and uh, how these things are important and disseminated more widely. Uh, and uh, as a part of this conference, uh, there's a range of scholars around the world that will be able to be exposed to this uh, discussion in the virtual gallery and uh, also the, uh, the amazing uh, context for it. So thanks for joining us both. And thanks, Andrew. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant.